Hey guys, this is Preston Lewis with the Off-Road Motorsports Youth Foundation, and today we're going to be talking about notching tubes, how to prep them, fit them, how to get all your angles, and all that fun stuff. So stay tuned and we'll get right into it. Hey guys, so this is kind of our tool layout for what you're going to need today. Tape measure of some kind. A digital angle finder is what I use. You could use a uh, standard like mechanical angle finder. I've always used a digital. It works the best for me. Some type of marking device, whether that be soapstone, one of these silver streaks. They work really well. Or just a permanent marker. You'll need a pair of channel locks or pliers and a screwdriver. Use those to get the plug of steel out of the hole saw after you make your notch. You'll need the corresponding hole saw for whatever size tube you're using. Uh, today we're gonna be working with inch and five eighths DOM. That's what we had laying around. That's what I've got set up in the hole saw on the uh, tubing notcher. You'll need a file. This is about a 12 inch file. You'll see how that gets used in a little while. A little carbide deburring tool. I like to use a DA sander to prep my materials with and a small three inch angle grinder with a small sanding disc on it. This is 80 grit. And if you notice the arbor on this one, we have cut back. That way it allows your paper to flex more. That's very important to getting a smooth uh, radius and deburr on your notches. Also recommend a pair of gloves you're gonna have a lot of sharp stuff coming at you and the most important thing safety glasses you should have these on already but make sure you have safety glasses all the pieces that come off these hole saws are very hot and sharp you don't want those in your eyes uh, long sleeve shirts also preferred so this is a joint already tacked up imagine this is already mounted up into a car or on whatever project you're working on in your shop we need to put a brace from this tube to this tube, which will be this piece here. We know this top point needs to intersect right here at this mark that I put on the tube, and this bottom needs to intersect right here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take some two inch masking tape, and I'm gonna lay it right at that mark so that it creates a nice line all the way around our tube that we can use for measuring. You wanna keep that as square as possible on there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it helps the more square you can get it. Now that I've got our two points marked out, what I'm gonna do is hang this piece of tape across here to represent our tube. So what I like to do is get down eye level with it. And you want that tube, as you look across your level, to intersect with this point out here. So basically, you're just creating a new plane to represent your tube out here. All right, so now that we've got our tape on to represent our tube, we're gonna break out digital angle finder. What you're gonna wanna do, stick that on the tube for 89 degrees right now. So almost a perfect 90. You're gonna hit zero on that. It's now reading zero degrees. You then want to hold your angle finder right up against that tape. We're sitting at 44.7 degrees right now. So we're just gonna write that on here. Now in theory, this notch over here should be almost identical, but it's not gonna be exact. So what we're gonna do is put our angle finder down here again. We're at 89 degrees. Zero it out. We 
We are at 45.3. So in this case, since this is a perfect 90, 44.7 plus 45.3 equals 90. This doesn't always happen because these are not always 90 degree joints. So I recommend measuring both ends you're going to notch. Now that we have all of our measurements taken on our angles, what we're going to do is we're going to measure the length of our tube. So on our tube, this is called the throat of the notch, okay? That's the bottom edge. So that's a throat and that's a throat. That's where it's going to sit in the tube. What we need to know is how long it is from this point up to this point, okay? The way we're going to do that is since we put our pieces of tape that wrap the tube, we can simply just take our tape measure in here. Lay it up to where it's resting like that. And that gives us eight and 15 sixteenths is our length. So when we get done, this tube should measure eight and 15 sixteenths from this point up to here. So now that all of our measurements are taken, we know our length and we know our angles, we need to be able to mark out where these notches are gonna sit. To do so, you need a center line of this tube. Finding center line on a round piece can be very difficult, but the easiest way that I've found to do it is you're simply gonna get two pieces of the same size material, lay them next to each other, and you're gonna take your file, and very lightly, you're just gonna drag your file up and down it, hold these very still, and now you're gonna have a center line that runs end to end. So we're gonna lay our tape on there. We want eight and 15 sixteenths. So we're gonna notch So on this piece, eight and 15 sixteenths landed just about at the very edge, just perfectly. So now we'll chuck this up in the notcher, get our notch cut into it and go from there. So we've got that all set in there. I set our notcher at just a hair under 45 degrees, which will make it 44.7 for us. What we want is that we want our saw to come in right on that blue line, right in that center line. So we want to twist it just a hair. Now we're going to clamp it down. So it's all clamped in place, just like we want. It's very important to have some form of cutting oil on this, otherwise you will smoke these whole saws in no time. A little bit of oil right there and you want to spin your saw fast with light pressure don't bear down on this and don't go real slow because it'll start biting and bucking and jumping and it won't be real fun bashful with the oil. It's very important.
As you can see now, we've bottomed out. It will not go any further. Reason for that is this edge is hitting the very back of our saw. So we need to break that little plug out of there. That's what our channel locks are for. Sometimes it comes out in one big piece. Sometimes you gotta break little chunks off. But the material's pretty thin where your saw has been running. So you can just bend it back and forth. I'm just gonna break right out of there. Be careful to throw these away, otherwise they will get caught in your shoe. And you'll track them in your truck and track them everywhere. again reach back here break off the big chunk and finish out the last little portion of your notch now it's time to knock all these burrs off I like to use little three inch angle grinder you want to roll it so that you keep this round contour you don't want those really thin edges out there that makes the joint weak that's what you're going for that look right there Take your deburring tool, break those little burrs out of there. All nice and good looking now. Now you're gonna wanna take your DA sander and sand all around these joints so it's nice and clean when you're ready to weld it up. So now that we've got both notches made, we should be able to lay that bad boy in there. If you come around to this side, you can see that we are sitting right at the edge of our tape on each side, right where we want it to be. Now that gives us just enough room to run a weld bead in there, and we're all set. Well, I'd say that pretty much wraps it up for this episode. Uh, in the next one, we're going to be welding out that joint, show you guys how we would go about doing that, and help you guys learn a little bit more about the fabrication side and all of that fun stuff. Uh, we'd like to thank everybody that's helped us get to this point. Uh, you know, Miller Welders, CSM Mechanical, Road Rage Transport, uh, just to name a few of them, Willwood Brakes. Uh, all of you guys do so much to help us. Rugged Radios is another big one. But all of you guys that help support what we're trying to do and help get the education out there to the younger generation uh, it goes a long way we uh, definitely recognize it and would love to get more support from all of you guys so please like share subscribe all that fun stuff it goes a long way uh, towards getting more sponsors and getting more kids in the door so uh, there's going to be a link in the description if you want to learn more about us and uh, see how you can get involved but thanks and tune in for the next one